All right, guys, so welcome to uh, Thursday night team call. Um, this is a Making Changes team call, but we have um, Mark and Heather on from Team Destiny, and I'm super excited to have them um, chat for us, and I want to start doing more of these having guest speakers talk, because you guys get to see my face every week, and you guys see me here local you guys see me around town and yeah you don't you get sick of me so I'm excited to have somebody else um, chat today so I just kind of wanted to recap the week we have uh, Super Saturday coming up and we are so lucky we are having the here in Calgary Canada, Canada we're having the Western Regional uh, Conference as our Super Saturday so I went to the Western Regional and drove for hours for the last one and um, Jody oh I can mute you there Perfect. Um, so then this is something that you guys need to be going to. If you want to build your business, um, Joel Freeman is going to be there and he's going to be doing a live workout. Um, it's, you know, you've got top coaches there talking and doing their thing. And it's just like soaking in all the energy instead of just doing these team calls and seeing everybody on social media, seeing real people and being successful and you can just soak in that energy. If you are going to it, I want to tell you guys something. When you guys go to these, you get so pumped up and you're like, yeah, I'm going to do that. Yeah, I'm going to go home. I'm going to do 50 invites. And then you go home and you don't do them. So whatever you guys learn from the Super Saturday or any of this team call, any trainings, just apply it. Do it. So it's great to be all pumped up and want to do something, but you've got to do it. So that's kind of where I wanted to say with that. We are in September, guys. I am running a fall into fitness challenge group. Um, I hope everybody's running the group on there. If you're not, join up with me and then we can share some weeks and go from there. I'm not going to take too much time from that. You guys listen to the national wake-up calls on Mondays. You guys know to reach out to me. Um, and I'm just really excited for Mark and Heather to talk because I'm going to let them tell their story. I kind of like wrote up a little something, but I'm like, you know what? their energy and I just love that they're like a team of like a couple doing this and that they're side by side in every aspect of their life they're sharing if you guys don't follow them on social media follow and check I even had to ask Mark I'm like what filter are you guys using because all your pictures look like professional pictures so I'm gonna let you guys go from there if you guys just want to take a few minutes to tell your story I'll mute myself and then go from there. awesome so yeah, so so honestly, like I'm I'm really fired up for tonight. Um, I'm really excited, and the fact that she asked us, um, you know, it it never gets old when we get asked by somebody else to come on here and hang out with you guys for a little bit and just kind of um, either teach or tell our story or whatever. It's kind of cool. So um, Heather and I, so I, I won't go into like deep core story. Like Melanie said, you guys can follow us on social media. We we are we like to tell our story. Uh, but um, I actually met Heather through applying for a job. So she was the um, store manager, and I needed a job at the time. And I went in and I went out the kitchen. I went in one day, and that's how we actually met. So. Um, you know, like fast forward a little while, we nothing ever happened. And then um, eventually uh, she messaged me out of the blue one day through Facebook um, and want to kind of like roll into that a little bit. Yeah. So, well, I had gotten promoted and he had ended up leaving where I was working and I went to open another store and I was looking for more help and I hadn't talked to him in like a year and a half. And I said, will you come back and work for me? And I hadn't seen him in like a year. So he came back and he, I knew he did something with health and fitness. Like I knew he, you know, was in good shape and worked out. And he had probably very nicely had asked me to either try a workout or try shape probably for over the a course of an entire year. And he was really nice about it. And he knew I loved to read and was always like, super, I was always just super positive. Um, but he, he would always very nicely like recommend good books for me. The Secret was the number one book, I think. Yeah. The Secret. Yep. So The Secret, if you haven't checked that out, The Secret is very good. So finally one day, he knew I had been going to the gym and I had probably been going to the gym on and off sporadically for about five years with like zero results. Like I just wasn't, I was maintaining, but I was, I've never pushed myself. I wasn't getting anywhere. 
And so I finally said yes to trying a workout and trying something new. And I will be 100% honest, I was scared. I was scared. That's probably why I didn't go for a year. I was scared out of my mind. Like, here's a big guy and he's in really good shape. And I don't know what, you know, I don't know if I can keep up with him or do what he's doing. So we went and we did um, our program that we did. We did Body Beast. And that was it. I was instantly hooked after that workout. I fell in love with it. I thought it was absolutely amazing. And then the next day, uh, he actually brought me a shake to work. And I was running my morning sales meeting, and I had my whole staff there. Cool. Like, we weren't together at this time, just so you know. No. Like, we're, we weren't together. <laughs> so. so he brought me in a shake, and getting ready in the mornings and working a corporate job. And I was always, like, so busy and had these morning meetings. And by the time that was done, I had other things going on, and I never really ate. So I had that shake in the morning. Didn't know what was in it. Didn't know anything about it. All I know is that it was super yummy and it completely filled me up. Like at lunchtime, people were asking me what I'm doing for lunch and I'm like, nothing. I am so full. Hmm. And then um, once I, he kind of told me what was in it, I was like, yeah, let me get some. Where to just, where do we order? Sign me up. What are we doing? Yep. So she ordered her challenge pack and um, you know, we're lucky in the sense we can say this, but Beachbody actually brought us together because I truly believe that what that when she finally said yes to come try Body Beast with me, took her a while, like she said, but when she finally decided, that's what started like everything. We started hanging out more and getting to know each other more. And it just kind of went from there. And then eventually, I, I, like things moved fast. So we... Um, it, it did, but I will say, um, I remember being invited over to his house to and he would be on team calls like this uh, just oh. like a call like this i wouldn't get on the camera i wouldn't get anywhere near his computer i thought he was absolutely insane i thought it was the most bizarre thing in the entire world she thought it was crazy like i was used to morning conference calls getting yelled at by district managers just like getting my head ripped off and here he was sitting with a ton of strength strangers on the computer late at night and I just thought it was bizarre and it took me a good like six months of watching this and then coming to realize that these were not strangers that these were friends that became like family and it was just such an eye-opening experience for me yeah so um you know we're very lucky and we'll, we'll kind of go off of that because like she said you can follow us on social media we um tell our story quite a bit but I don't want to like bore you guys with that like I really so whenever somebody asks us to like come hang out with you guys or you know somebody else's team we really like to bring value and so um, if you're free and you can write some notes um, I think we've got some stuff that's really gonna help you maybe some new stuff that you've never heard um, maybe you have but maybe we can hopefully um, help you out so we're gonna start with how to tell your story um, you want to roll with that? Okay. So there's four key. Well, first of all, in what we do, we really connect with people. That is our job, right? As coaches is to make an impact in someone's life and connect with people. And we do that through telling stories. So they always say, you know, facts tell, but stories sell. You have everything that you do. You have to do it through, it, through a, story. a story. So there's four parts to telling your story or so, a story in general or any story yeah, any story yeah. so the more so okay so we're gonna give you some social media tips as we go on um, but just keep in mind when you're telling a story the more stories you can tell the more people can connect with you so um, just we'll just roll with that we'll, we'll I'll jump in I get excited I'll jump into okay. it right now so just so, tell how to tell your story so one it's gonna be um, <clears throat> the first part of the story is always gonna be your background so for like my background I came from a corporate world I worked in retail um, and that's what I did for like 15 years that was my background um, so that's number one yep number two is what didn't you like so for me I didn't like that you know I worked 15 hours a day I worked on every weekend I missed every single holiday um, if it just felt like Christmas, I was New Year's, yeah you, if it was a holiday I was working it um, you know, if you've worked retail, you know, come the Christmas season, it, it can get pretty, you know, scary. 
in there. So there was just so many things that, you know, I was under, I was overworked, underpaid. These are all things that are true to my story that I did not like. Can I stop you right there for one second? Yes. So not everybody hates their job. So if you're one of those people that actually like your job, there's, I, there's got to be parts that you actually don't like. And maybe you even tell a story about how you like certain things. Um, but you, but leading into number three is you found a solution. So maybe you really liked your job, but maybe they capped your salary. Or maybe you were only paid a certain amount per hour. Or maybe you had to go in on the weekends. Or maybe you did have to work the weekends. Or, you know, just because um, – just because you were working a job doesn't mean you hated it. Heather, I think she liked her job probably for most of the time until probably she met me because. Facts. So I was a hundred percent company girl. I she was drank all the Kool -Aid. in. I drank the Kool-Aid. Like I she drank the Kool -Aid was for so sure. hard, like hardcore company girl. I was the it girl. Like I was, the, I was yeah. the it girl. And then um, Mark opened up my eyes to a better way. But you have to understand, like, um, just because you don't, either you don't like it or you do like it, but either way, you found a solution. Now, maybe that's an extra $50 a week. Maybe that's an extra $100. I don't know, you know, depending on how much work you put into it. It could be any amount of money, but maybe it's paying for daycare or paying for groceries or paying for an extra vacation or paying for, um, I, I don't know, but not, it, just whatever. So three is that you found a solution and it doesn't just have to be money. money it can be, yep. You found a community. You found people to surround Sur support yourself. Support you. Yep. Support you. Support up. Yeah. I think uplift. for supporting the, the community itself, like the best community I've ever been a part of, I can say that hands down is um, like, like a people like Melanie, I can go to her and be like, Hey, um, like I'm really struggling with this. Hey, can you help me out a little bit? And I know for a fact she would help me. And then there's other people the same way. And um, when you get around people that are supporting you and care about you and want to see you be successful, um, whatever success is to you, it, it makes a difference too. It's not always financial. So. Yep. And that's. Yep. Oh, sorry. I didn't that, mean to no, I was just saying that doesn't even include like the nutrition or the health oh, and no, fitness. Yeah. Like there's so many parts it's of the be solution. It's got to be to you. Yes. There's different things for different people. And um, number four is how you feel about your future. So how does your future look now compared to where you were before? Yep. So I see, you know, I've made new friendships and yeah, I, I, I see you over there. <laughs> <laughs> Yummy! That oh, that does look good. Oh, we're all coming to your house, Brenda. <laughs> so, how do you feel about your future? Um, you know, financially, mentally, emotionally, spiritually. I know that you know I feel so much stronger, and that I can accomplish so much more because of the community that I'm surrounded with. So, I feel good about everything that's happening. For my future. Yeah, so I'll break it down real quick. So your background is number one. Uh, what you didn't like is number two. The solution you found is number three. And then number four is how you feel about your future. So, and that could be, that could be a million and one different things for, um, for the specific person or whatever. So um, now, okay, so we're going to kind of break off your story. Now, remember, when stories, again, what do they do? They sell people. Because facts don't honestly like people don't give a give a crap about facts. Well, here, right? Yeah. Here's the thing. Peep. Every single decision somebody is going to make is going to be based on an emotion. It's how they feel. So you people. can tell them all the facts you want in the world, but when you share a story um, and you can become emotional and open up and break down your walls and break down their walls, that's where they're going to connect with you. So that's why we say, tell your story, tell, you know, whatever you're, you're talking about, um, whether it's good personal development, something you read, how it's affected you, but tell it in a form of a story so about yourself. Yeah. Always. Okay. So I'm going to, so a lot of times I see coaches just tell stories in the sense of the, let's say we're listening to Les Brown and he says something like, um, just like a quote. Um, and then you tell the quote and then you're like, you talk at the per at, at your social media followers or your friends versus being like me, right? 
You have something? No. Well, you, you're on, you're. On, you I'm know. on the right track. Yes. She says. Yes. So a lot of times I'll see people that are saying, "You need to do this, and, and you, you need, need to do, do that. that." And what we're doing is we're talking down to them or we're talking at them. But when you just flip it around and said, oh, I heard a great quote and this is what it meant to me. So when you, you when you so start your post I, with the word I. I had trouble getting up in the morning and I couldn't do it. And I and I would get up and I didn't want it. I'd hit the alarm or the snooze button and go right back to bed. So that's, you're telling, you're, you're starting to tell your story a little bit versus, you know what? You should wake up in the morning and just get fired up and let's go do this and let's go team and. You know, there's, it's a totally different vibe the way you're telling people um, the story or yeah. whatever. So I don't – does that make sense? Yeah, start with I. I know what I'm saying, but I don't – Instead of you. Yeah, and, I instead of you. Yeah, yeah that's a great one. it makes a big, big difference in the tone and how to impact yep. people. So um, we could probably keep going on that, but let's just jump into social media. So these are going to be some – I think some really good tips for you guys that will help you guys if you guys are struggling with social media. Um, I'm going to go through them really fast because I know we don't have a lot of time. So if you have, again, if you have notes, um, write, them down. write them down. Yeah. So um, there's a such thing as called overposting. So um, when I first started this, I was told to post three to five times per day. So um, that's probably a good, whatever, a good, a good number. The problem is Facebook is totally different than what a speech body coaches do or network marketers do in general. So um, if you are posting a bunch of times per day, if you're posting five times per day, what happens is social media or your first post and then maybe a couple hours you post another post and then a couple hours you post in another post or whatever every three to four hours, what happens is your other posts are getting buried. So this is Facebook. This has nothing to do with Beachbody coaching, has nothing to do with network marketing, has nothing to do with any of that. That is just Facebook. This is what Facebook likes. Unfortunately or fortunately, there's millions and millions of people who are using Facebook. And um, you got to think of Facebook as a big ass computer who is super fucking sm freaking smart. Sorry. I <laughs> Sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> super freaking smart. Super freaking smart. And, um, what happens is they, um, so as you're gaining traction with likes, comments, usually comment, comments play more of a role. What happens is they're going to show your post to more people. So if you're posting every couple hours, what happens is it's going to get buried because you're not giving your post enough time to actually gain some traction. Now that doesn't mean you're going to go from, if you're averaging one, two, five, ten 10 likes, maybe a hundred likes, doesn't mean you're going to go to 20, 30, 300 likes or whatever. It just means you have to give yourself enough time for Facebook to show it to enough people. So as you're getting more comments and more likes, it will actually, the, it'll, the visibility will get increased. So does that make sense? Does that make sense? Yes. Explain it if it didn't. No, seriously. <laughs> I'll just uh, keep going. I, recently and this is going to happen every couple months facebook will change its algorithms so this is all just strictly about how facebook algorithms work and getting more people to see your story as you're sharing it so right now we're posting one to two times a day i would Average. say the max would be three max but they have to be quality posts so you always want quality over quantity, quantity. So, I think, so so i think this is a shifted it shifted um, for sure in in the last you know year not, couple not months. even yeah so how how we're posting and Matters. when we're posting it so, doesn't oh, matter right so um the more the more quality posts that you have the better obviously but you don't want to over overdo it right so um you want to make sure you give enough time to, for to build traction yeah huge change yeah yeah um spam so spamming is a huge thing so when i say spam what i mean is you're just posting the products so for us it would be what shakeology or the workouts or whatever workouts are included in the products by the way if you're just spamming spamming like you need to try this workout or you need to do this workout or you need to join my team or you need to try shakeology or you need like people will see that and maybe that worked a few years ago but they're, well, again, fortunately or unfortunately, there's a lot of network marketers that are out there and they're doing the same thing. And people will unfollow and unfriend you so fast because 
they just see that as like, okay, listen, I saw the makeup over here and I see this person trying to sell shape and that person trying to sell the workout and this and that. So you have to, um, you have to get people to trust you and like you yep. through your posts, through your stories. So again, it goes back. It's always going to go back to stories. So, right. So we always talk about like, we live out loud. So we are, we will share our life with people and we will talk about, you know, our struggles. I think a lot of times people always just talk about the successes, but I think you get um, a better emotional connection when you're able to talk with people about what you're struggling with and what you're doing that is sort of helping you without saying any specific keywords um, because you oh, want to yeah. brand yourself. So you so, don't, yeah, so, so yeah, don't want to say, so you don't, we'll do that in a minute. So okay. you don't want to say beach body. You don't want to say the name of the programs, the 21 day fix. I just did body beast. You don't want to say any of those because here's what's going to happen. You've given them the name. They're going to look up Google. Google will give them every um, review that, Good and bad. Right. So we know there's there's going to be both for everything. And now they have zero reason to come talk to you about what you're doing. You could have the best post in the world, but if you've given them all the information, they don't need you. So we've just you've just lost a customer. Possibly, so, yeah. Potentially. Potentially. So you want to build um, intrigue and um, you know be able to have a conversation about what it is that you're doing. Yeah, like the goal of social media is to peak interest. Yep. That's like that's if uh, out of anything that you take from this, if if you can peak interest and get people to either reach out to you or you're talking to them, um, peak peak interest is probably the biggest thing. Um. So we got into that. Okay. So here's another thing. Um. What happens is, you know how we we're always like, you got to add friends, you got to build your network, got to do that. It. What happens is, as you're building your friends list. Um, your, your friends will eventually, some of them will never ever like, comment, interact, uh, message you back, anything. Most people are actually hurting you because of your visibility. So if you actually message them and they don't answer you, that hurts your visibility. If you are, um, if they never interact with you, it mean it, they, what, what happens is you get less interaction and less visibility. So I, um, I always say delete those people and, and add another person or find somebody else through a friend of a friend or somebody else. But if they're never interacting with you, unless you know for sure that they're watching your stuff, um, they're actually doing you more harm than good. They're hurting your visibility on Facebook. Um, so delete them. So I always say if you add 10 people, delete 10 people. Um, obviously don't delete the 10 that are interacting and liking and commenting, obviously, <laughs> but, um, but you all, it, it's better to have a thousand quality friends than 5,000 friends, but you know what I'm saying? So, yep. Cause they're, they're not seeing your stuff anyway and you're not, you're never going to be able to connect with them. Yeah. So, um, so you want to remember, uh, again, we're going to go back to the stories. So, as you're remembering all of these different ideas and things through social media, you want to make sure you're telling stories. Um, don't always use quotes. Quotes are good because what happens is, you know, people will like and comment those because um, they're good, but people get to know you through the stories. So, um, <coughs> so when it comes to um, quotes, anything that has ever been used before. So when you look up an inspirational quote or motivational quote, um, those quotes have been used a million times. So Facebook likes originality. They want something that's truly your own and original. So when, if it's something that's been shared before, if it's a quote that's been used, um, it's going to drop your visibility. Facebook is not going to show it to that many people. So if you are using a quote, um, add your own keywords, tell a little story at the top or at the bottom. So it doesn't look, um, repetitive that, that Facebook has seen it before so yeah. many times. Cause remember again, Facebook's like a big computer. So, um, they, they watch everything you do. So every keystroke, every mm -hmm. time you like a post, every time you comment, every time you add somebody, delete somebody, message somebody, Facebook knows exactly what you're doing. And that goes for everybody. So Facebook's learning, just like we're all learning and growing, Facebook's learning and growing. So 
Um, I'll kind of get into like some of the keywords you never, ever, ever want to use because your visibility will get freaking destroyed. Um, if you use money symbols, um, sales, product, yeah, BOGO, product buy one, get one yeah. free. Um, uh, I don't know. Uh, money, uh, try this for free. Uh, I don't know. Just anything. any salesy, salesy type words. Uh, Facebook knows it and they're going to show your Facebook your, or your post to less Nobody. people. They're going to bury it because they know what the keywords are and um, those those keywords will be they're going to get basically they get like almost like it's destroyed. Yeah. Like they see your post and it's like okay. Because, you didn't, pay, because you didn't pay for the ad. So yeah. Facebook knows right if if well, well, here's what I always say is Mark Zuckerberg is like the fourth richest dude in the world. And it's not because he let us all join Facebook for free. It comes from paid advertisement. So you got to think about that. So when you're using those words, what happens is um, Facebook's like, nope, you, you didn't pay for it. And I'm not going to let you make any money. Yeah, we're going to bury it. So um, it will just kind of get lost in the sauce. Yeah. Right. So. Mm -hmm. Um, you want to make sure that you're not using those kinds of words. Um, emojis is a big one. Um, your posts will actually get 30% more increase in visibility if you're using emojis. Um, here, here's what I always say about this is for Facebook, if they add a feature, it's for a reason. They want you to use it. So they have emojis. They want you to want you to use emojis. So in your posts, whether you're using a picture or just a regular post, Use emojis. You'll see in 99% of the Heather and my posts, there's emojis. Um, now, you don't necessarily have to overdo it, and you don't have to go crazy and tell a story with emojis, but you want to use emojis because it's important. And if it gets 30% more visibility, that's huge. That's huge because think about it. I mean, I don't know how many Facebook friends you guys have, but I have about, I, I went down from about 2,500. I've deleted about 500 people, so I'm about a little bit less than 2,000. Um, and I probably, if I'm really, really lucky, I maybe get like three to 400 people to see my posts, if I'm really lucky. And then um, mm -hmm. some, some of them will get like 100 likes or more. Yep. But the average post does not get seen. Your, your, all your friends list will never, ever, ever see your post. That's why it's important. Just delete the people that aren't interacting with you because you can find those other people. So can I pipe in guys? And we yeah. only have eight minutes. I was just going to say with that, cause a lot of like people that I talk to and a lot of coaches are worried about like annoying people. And I'm like, those people are not even seeing your posts. Like, yeah, you know sure. what I mean? that's why. So people are like, Oh, I didn't even know that you did that. It's like, you got to tell your story so many times for everybody. Over, to know your story. So I just wanted to add that. No, yeah. that was awesome because you know what? Heather and I will, so we'll go back in our posts and we'll pretty much copy and paste. We'll change up a few things here and there depending on how things are going. I like, we probably told our story, the same exact story, mm -hmm. like 50 times in the last like six months, the same exact story. And, and some, it, some of the people will see it again. It doesn't matter because there's always new people. If you're always constantly adding to your network, or interacting with new people, those new people will see your story. Whereas six months ago, um, it's like a totally different, totally, totally different like time, right? And I think you know people's lives change every six months. Every six months, people have a life event. So maybe they read your story six months ago, but now that they're reading it and it's hitting them in a different way, just like when you're reading personal development, something may catch their eye that's different. That's why it's so important yeah. that you oh, always yeah. got to continue to tell your story. You can listen to the same. I listen to the same Les Brown stories over and over and over and over. And there's certain ones that will hit me certain days, whereas I didn't even like hear it or didn't think about it. It's the same thing as your story. So um, don't be afraid to share your story over and over and over because new people will see it different. If, and even if the same people see your story, um, there might be something that they're reading that clicks with them. And all it takes is that one time for somebody to be like, holy crap, that's exactly okay. how I'm feeling. All right, we got to 
Okay. I know. So sorry. A couple quick things. So when you are um, making your post, really important, uh, take 15 minutes before you make your so you have your post ready this is probably the biggest thing that yep. we can probably tell you so you have your post ready to go you have your picture ready to go you take 15 minutes before you're going to actually post it and you're going to go on social media you're going to go on facebook and you're going to be social like <laughs> and comment you're like going comment. to interact with other people like honestly guys likes don't really count um, it's more the comments. It, the comments is because Facebook wants to see interaction. So they're tracking that interaction between you and that, and person. that other person. So you're going to take 15 minutes and comment on as many people as you can reach um, as yeah. fast as possible, yeah. you know, and add value and ask questions. Always when you're commenting on the, somebody else's post, the more questions you can ask. Or even your post. The goal is to always get interaction back. So if you can ask a question, hey, what, always the best. Where'd you get your necklace? I love your jacket. Where, where did you guys go for vacation? How was your day? I saw you out to dinner last yeah. night. What did you order? Like anything that you can ask because you're getting to know them and they're getting to know you, right? Through you're building media. a relationship through comments. Too. Yep. So um, that will absolutely help increase your visibility. And once you do that for 15 minutes and then make your post. And Mark and I have noticed since we've Big been doing time. that. We've been like playing around with it yep. just, to, and on, just to know. And on days we're slacking and we're like, oh, we need to make a post. And we don't have, like, we didn't go and like and comment. It gets very little traction. We might get 10 likes if we're lucky. And we're like, well, we didn't, we didn't inter interact. Yeah. So it's, Actually, if you go to our Facebooks today. Yeah. So we, if you watch, we always have a post or two per day. We skipped it a whole day because we were out with her mom and stuff. Um, Cause her mom's visiting us and our post got a lot more or a lot less, less. traction. It, visibility went, the way, visibility down. went also, way down. Also really quick. I know we've talked about Facebook likes originality. So if you're posting with a picture, make sure it's an original picture. It's your picture. It's something brand new. Every single picture um, and typing or quote, it's, it, it all has its original coding. If that picture has ever been posted before, the coding that's on that picture, Facebook will realize that it's already been posted before and your visibility will go down. So always try to do a brand new picture, something that's every, completely every original. Time, yeah. also, don't, don't do stock photos. We got like two minutes. Okay, so also... Hurry. They really want you sometimes do a post with no picture and then a post with a picture and then a video and then a post with no picture. So you've got to change Always it up. Always change it up. Yeah. Actually, believe it or not, the post without the photo sometimes will get the most, most traction. And remember, every single post add emojis. Mm -hmm. So we got two minutes. We'll end it there. I We've got so much more stuff. I know. But we don't have time. I know. Yeah. Kate, well, you guys are phenomenal. I've learned so much. I feel like I am still in my, like, when I first started coaching, uh, like, <laughs> with social media. So I've definitely learned a lot. Like, I, that 15-minute thing. And, yeah, like, I, I'm definitely going to start doing that. So thank you guys so much. I don't know if anybody has any questions. If you guys do, then um, reach out to Mark and Heather. You guys are doing so good and I'm so happy that you guys, it's 10 o'clock at night and well now it's what, 10.30 where these guys are right now. And it's, for most of us, it's only eight o'clock. So thank you so much. I just, yeah, I wrote, I took, you know what? I wrote it on a, <laughs> on my mail, but I took yeah. some notes and I will type them up and I'll share them in the team page, you guys. Cause I think it's really important. I think us as a team and, we don't want to be salesy like sale i hate it i just read this really long article about like network marketing and how people get turned off and it's just like how they get sucked in and how they don't show the real life and and it was really eye-opening that i never ever want to have that icky feeling in my stomach of like making a sale and people think like, i'm not good at selling something neither am i and i'm i you know i've been coaching for two and a half years i don't want to feel that icky feeling inside and i think if i'm connecting with somebody and like uh for, for connecting with people and we know stuff about them before we even invite them and we find how it's going to help them that's where we're going to succeed and that's where we're going to come across genuine so thank you so much to mark and heather i want everybody to have a great week let's push towards it it's september let's hit our goals and let's all have a fabulous night thanks bye bye bye, bye. bye.